Three categories of people participated in the evils of transatlantic slave trade in those days. The slave buyers, the slave sellers and the slave owners, all of which fit into the race of Africans and non-Africans. Though today, only non-Africans seem to take the blame. I have treated this in my past videos, so I am only going to pass through it. Let's take a second to talk about the natural bad guys before talking about the reason why you might also sell slaves in those days. When pushes to end slave trade started, these people who benefited from it didn't want it to end, and that includes African kingdoms and the individuals whose wealth comes from slave trade. Obviously, people who benefit from evils don't want it to end, and that is human nature, nasty and brutish, according to Thomas Hobbes. But do you know, even if you are not a bad person, you could easily become bad and start selling slaves as well. Today, in this video, I am going to go back to life in the days of old to explain to you the two reasons why some Africans started selling Africans into slavery, which is the reason why slave trading went on a large scale. First one, it's either you enslave them or become a slave yourself. Let's take a look back into what is obtainable in African societies, especially in West Africa, which is the area where most slaves were transported across the Atlantic. Africa has over 3,000 tribes, which makes it probably the most diverse continent in the world. When there's a situation like this, there are a few things this can lead to, and they include rivalry, war, and struggle for supremacy. Because of this, Africans have always been in war or supremacy against each other, raising weaker entities and getting royalties. Not only royalties, but slaves as well, and that is before the transatlantic slave trade. These slaves were mainly shared among the warlords, kings, and those who participated in the war. The slaves were used to do farm works, house chores, and run errands. While they may also trade slaves among themselves through barter, there are little instances of it, and no one does it as a major business. When foreign slave traders started coming in, trades were mainly done through barter. I mean giving what you have to get what you want. So now here is a question. You as an African kingdom surrounded by enemies or rival kingdoms, what would you need most? Weapons, heavy guns. Foreign slave traders soon introduced powerful weapons such as cannon guns into the system, which caused more slaves. When African tribes started seeing how powerful these guns are, it became a must have weapon in order for them to stand a chance against their enemies that would want to enslave them or subdue them or in order to be ahead of others in military might and stay invincible and to do this they also need slaves because that is the price this brought about the situation like is it that you enslave them or become a slave yourself eventually this is because if you don't grow powerful by getting slaves to have powerful weapons other tribes will successfully raid yours to sell you as slave and become strong. So between 1600 and 1900, the African continent had the largest number of conflicts and wars, most of which could have been resolved peacefully, but wouldn't because of the opportunity or desire of getting slaves during the conflict. Kingdoms like Daomi, which has been enslaved by Royal Kingdom later, would go into the business and get themselves freed from the powerful Oyo Kingdom. Numpe, Bogu, and Ijebu Kingdom as well successfully revolted to gain their freedom. The second reason was that, in reality, there was no Africa. So, the thing was that there was no Africa in those days. African consciousness started during the colonial period. So prior to that, it is your tribe versus all other tribes. You would have no issue in selling them for a mirror or a call as there was no law that prohibits slavery in those days. So you can check out my upcoming video about Kiriji and also do subscribe to this channel for more African issues.